Now, thirdly, our motives must always be for the glory of God. Look in verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. No one who is in their right mind, no one who is sane is drawn to a light bulb. No one draws near to just a light bulb to look at a light bulb. But they draw near to the light that the light bulb gives off. And that should be the same with us. We shouldn't desire for men to come to us. We shouldn't desire for men to think about us. We should not desire for men to exalt us. We should not even desire that men respect us. But we want to be vessels to turn all men to Christ, to turn them to Christ. John the Baptist knew this well, didn't he? Listen to what he said in John 3.30. He said, he, that is Jesus, must increase, but I must decrease. In evangelicalism today, and even in reform circles, there are the great men, the heroes, the popular men, the men everybody knows, the men who speak in all the conferences. This is wrong. It's just wrong. We shouldn't look to men. We shouldn't want to be seen. On the day of judgment, don't you realize, brothers, on the day of judgment, everything is going to change. And it's frightening. It's frightening for me. I know that people know me all over the world. But that means nothing in God's eyes. Nothing. I know two young ladies. You don't know their names. They minister in a country in Asia that is primarily Muslim. They have suffered for Christ like you and I could not even imagine. They've never preached before thousands of people. And no one knows their name. But on the day of judgment, those two little Indonesian ladies will be exalted. And men like me will be humbled. Don't you see that? We always need to live in light of that. There's, there's a philosophical question that is sometimes asked. Would God take the most beautiful flower he has ever made and put it in a forest where no man will ever walk? Why would he do that? How would he get glory from that flower? No man sees it. So how will he receive glory? He receives glory because he looks at it every day. It belongs to him. He made it for him. He delights in looking at it, whether any man sees it or not. And that's the same way with some pastors. Their names are not known. Their congregations are small. But on the day of judgment, they may be exalted above the most famous names. Why is that? God cares about Christ likeness. A heart that belongs to him is more important than a man who has a church of 50,000. We must not look at things as men look at things. We must look at things as God looks at things.